uh, Dr. Bob Morgan from Loomis Basin Equine Medical Center, and uh, we're going to continue talking about equine dentistry. This will be Equine Dentistry 102, um, and there's a quiz after this one too, and that is for you to identify the most courageous man or person in Transylvania. So. Um, Here's what we're going to see inside the mouth when we do an oral exam. And here's where the concept of, of floating mouths comes about. This is what we're all thinking about, not maybe the more complex problems, which we'll talk about in a minute or two. Sharp enamel points. These occur on the outside of the upper teeth and on the inside, and I do not have a picture of that, of the lower teeth. And here they are, they're very sharp, and they are going to create ulcers on the inside of the mouth. Here's an example of those ulcers. This horse has some fairly extreme ulcers, but this is not uncommon, and this makes it difficult for the horse to eat. It's painful, they're dropping food, and we want to float those, those points off. So this, this concept of floating the mouth is now motorized dentistry, and we talk more about balancing the mouth and doing a dentistry rather than floating. So here are some other things that we can encounter in the mouth besides just taking care of the points. Um, well, first of all, talking a little bit about, uh, you'll hear the equine doctors that are doing this talking about numbers of teeth. And it's basically, all these teeth have their names like premolars, molars, incisors, but we've gone to a numbering system in the adult horse of 100, 200, 300, 400. So all the teeth starting with the incisors and moving all the way back to the very last molar in the upper right quadrant are considered the 100 teeth. They go from 101 to 111 and so forth. So just a little point of reference. The question is, does a horse need a rebalancing every year? The answer to that, and I think we've talked about that a little bit in our first segment, is yes. We need to prevent problems rather than um, try to catch up with them. I liken this to people who have their horse's feet done every six to eight weeks. Feet grow, teeth grow. They're hypsodont teeth, and unless we stay after them, fortunately we don't have to do them every six or eight weeks, but at least every year there is balancing to be done in the horse's mouth. This is the way we would like the mouth to look. If we came into a mouth like this on an oral exam, we'd say, thank you very much, take your horse home. Nice, flat grinding surfaces, no points, incisors nicely lined up. Sorry. All right, so here's a problem we encounter uh, a lot of times. It's, they're called hooks. So on the sides of the teeth, we call them points. But on the first upper tooth and the last lower tooth, as seen in this skull, uh, there's sharp protuberances, which we call hooks. These are obviously, this one is causing an erosion right here. And they're, again, getting in the way of the side-to-side -side motion of the horse's chewing action. So hooks, we talk about a lot. Overbite. This often comes with hooks. Think of an overbite not as just occurring at the incisor levels, which we see here, but all the way back in the mouth. So this upper jaw is set forward of the lower jaw, and it's obviously going to not have good wear back in the mouth as well as poor wear up here. So often we see hooks in connection with an overbite. Steps and waves. Best seen here where this tooth is over erupted and the upper tooth above it is being worn too much. This tooth is over erupted and the lower tooth is being worn too much. When you get a whole series of steps together, we call it a wave mouth. It's really nothing more than steps. In an actual mouth, here's a tooth that has gone, gone way too long and is probably causing problems we can't see it on a tooth below. So that's a step tooth, step mouth. Diastomas are what we could prevent, in, uh, the problems with diastomas could be prevented in horses if they could only floss, but alas. So it's tooth teeth that gap between one another and food packs in there. You can see it here in the dental mirror. Um, so washing the horse's mouth out after eating can sometimes help with these. There's nothing we really have available to close those other than balancing the mouth, which sometimes will work. Missing teeth. So this horse is missing this tooth, and this tooth has developed a step on it. This horse is missing a lot of teeth, an older horse, and this, we're getting some really long steps as a result of that. 
This problem is uh, common in older horses. It's called equine odontoclastic tooth resorption and hypersemantosis. Most of us refer to it as a hypersemantosis alone. It's too, too many words. These horses and their incisors, they develop too much cementum, a part of normal tooth growth that is overdone, and the, the jaw gets very bulgy, and these two teeth can become sore and, um, and painful for eating. In that case, these teeth or tooth or teeth will have to be extracted. Wolf teeth, we all know about these. It's the first premolar. Here's one, here's one. Uh, riders don't like these because they uh, feel that it interferes with the bits, so those are routinely removed. This horse has a lot of nice uh, uh, buckle points that need to be removed also. And the answer to today's quiz, the most courageous person in Transylvania is Dracula's dentist.